Hello guys, Bubba here again, and today I have a draggable text tutorial. Um, let me just show you the example here. This is a text object which you can drag, and that's about it. It supports layers, so layer 1 will go on top of everything else. And let's jump right into coding here. Uh, I'm going to call this program draggable and the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a table with all of our text objects so like this and for layering we're going to need to use sequential order so we're going to just go ahead and define three or why not let's just do four um, <clears throat> and we're going to need some basic data in here. We're going to need the text. So that'll be layer one. And then we're going to need the color, colors.orange. We're going to need an x1. So that's our initial, you know, left boundary. And that's going to be the, uh, let's see, one. Let's do y. It's going to be equal to one as well. And we're just going to do that for the rest of these. Text is layer 2. Color is blue. X1 is 1. Y is 2. And layer 3. How about green? And layer 3, 4. Layer 4. Color. Per and there's I don't know if there's purple um blue green orange you know what white that'll be that'll be fine um no it won't because then you won't be able to see it um cyan there we go x1 can be one y can be three again so we'll draw this will be under you won't be able to see it until we move layer three anyway we we'll want to define the draw function first. It will take no parameters. And what we're going to do here is it, you'll notice that if we start drawing on the first layer, like your instinct might be, you would actually draw over that layer when you go to the next one. So you draw layer one, then you draw layer two on top. So you don't want to do that. You're going to want to start at number four. So we're going to use a for loop we're going to go index is going to start at the last um, last index and then we're going to go down to the first one and then we're going to decrement by one each time okay so uh, I'm going to do I'm going to create a reference to each one here it's just going to be for ease because if you have to type text objects index dot you know whatever every single time is going to get really annoying so I just go ahead and define that and it's really just a pointer that's all it is so we're going to define an x2 uh, ref dot x2 now the reason I'm defining an x1 and an x2 is because we need the left boundary and we need the right boundary so that we know when we click inside of it um, so this is going to be equal to ref.x1 plus the length of the uh, text. So there's that. And we're going to go set the background color to the color given to us. And we're going to set the cursor position to, let's see here, uh, ref.x1 and ref.y. Then we're just going to go ahead and write the text. Yes. Okay. And just to make sure that this works, let's go ahead and test it. Bam. Perfect. And I did forget to do one thing, though. Um, when you draw, you're going to want to clear every single time. Um, color, colors dot white, black, how about black is better. Okay. Perfect. Uh, our next function, we're going to check click x, y. Now, I need a little bit of further explanation for this. When you 
detect drags. I'm not sure if you guys knew this, but uh, say you pull an event, all right, and you are dragging across the screen like this. I'm clicking and holding right now. That first place where you click is not going to be a drag event. Actually, it's going to be a mouse click. So it's going to send out a mouse click, then the X and the Y of that coordinate or the coordinates there and then if you continue holding and you move along it's going to send out now a drag mouse drag and this coordinates will be you know same so we need to check with that mouse click if it's actually clicking on something so we're going to go through the table of text objects and this time we can just go in sequential order because if we start at one and we go to three then we'll be layer one should be drawn on top so that's exactly how we want I'm gonna get rid of this stuff here okay so if our X that has been clicked is larger than or equal to oh sorry first we need to create that reference well, not need to but let's just make our life as easy as possible so if it, x is larger than or equal to ref dot x one and x is smaller than or equal to ref dot x two and y is equal to ref dot y then we will return that index otherwise we're gonna return false okay and we also need a move text object for if we have actually so this is going to take I believe four parameters it's going to take the index of the thing that we are going to move or the text object that we're going to move it's going to take a click X drag X drag Y Okay, so let me do a little bit of explaining. Explain. Okay, so we're going to the example here. Now you'll notice that if I click in the middle of this text object and I drag it, it's going to follow my mouse. But if you were to do what your instinct probably first tells you to do, which is just go ahead and set the new x1 position to this drag x or drag y, you're gonna have this object just jump over and actually I'm going to change the code real quick and I've changed the code let's edit uh, not sorry edit let's just go into example alright I'm gonna click in the middle and I'm gonna drag Oh, boom it jumps all the way to the right there and the reasoning is we are just setting that x1 variable where it starts drawing to the new drag so um, we are going to need to actually find the difference between this first click that we do and this new coordinates. So let's edit draggable and here we go. So that click X is going to be that first place that we click where we use the check click. So we're going to do uh, we're going to create our reference first and we are going to change that x1 to ref dot x1 plus uh, drag x minus click x okay so this is the difference here and it's going to add it on to x1 and if this is a negative value of course this will be ref dot x1 minus whatever the value is so now we just need to change the y to the let's see here click no sorry drag y all right perfect last thing we've got to do is we got to use our main while loop usually I put this in a function but since I'm just showcasing this we might as well just leave it out in the open okay so let's draw first and then we will do our OS dot pull event okay and I put it in the table there for easy access 
if E1 is the mouse click, then, and if it's a mouse drag. Okay, so what does our check click return? It returns an index. So that means for us to be able to move something, we need to store that somewhere. So let's go outside of our while loop so it doesn't reset it every time. And let's get a selector. And it's going to be a table so that we can store that original click X that I was talking about. So selector is now going to be equal to check click E3, E4. And it's also going to, let's see, yes, going to have E3, which is the click X. Perfect. Now, we're going to check if selector 1. So, if this check click has indeed returned something and it's set selector 1 to that uh, index, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to move the text object. And it's going to be selector one and the click X which is going to be the selector two and then we're going to do the drag X which is E3 and the drag Y E4 and now since we've moved it that um, we're going to have to move the click X to this uh, the new drag X so let me test this and I just realized that this needs to be E1, not E2. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a shot. And bam, perfect. So hopefully this tutorial was helpful to you guys. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below or send me a PM on the forums, whichever way you prefer. Um, and if you guys have a tutorial request, then please ask. I really want to know. And I'll see you guys later.